What's going on, teamers? Welcome to Digipod, the digital podcast. I'm your boy, Varney, today in the studio with my boy, Dan, and we've also got Nightmare here. For those of you who don't know Nightmare, Nightmare is also known as Nathan. He is the, is it right to say the head judge for PPG, right? Yeah, I'm the head judge for most All right. of PPG games. For their most of PPG. Ah, okay. Cool, yeah. cool. So what's going on though? What's going on, fellas? How's everybody doing? What's up? What's up, guys? We're flipping things around. We're starting interview first, and then we're moving on to all the other spiel because we're gonna get it knocked straight, straight out of the it. park and yeah. right away. Jump right into it. Mr. So, Nathan is a very busy man. <laughs> <laughs> very. This interview's been in the work for weeks. Wink wink, nudge nudge. So let's uh let's hear it. Nate, how did you get involved with you know all of it? Digimon, PPG, judging. Oh, man. Um so back in like COVID, um in early February, I saw a Japanese Twitter uh post for the new Digimon card game uh released in Japan and I got super hyped for it. And uh during that time I just took some time to like research a little bit more about it. And then uh, COVID hit. And at the time I was working as uh, a maintenance man in a gym. I just just repaired equipment, that's all I did. And during that time, my state had actually had a mandatory shutdown of all gyms. So I had a lot of free time. So I ended up just basically finding the Digimon 2020 Discord. And I joined that in the beginning of March. And, and that was like the round time it came out, right? Yeah, it's like it, it started to like. That was uh, 1.5 came out, I think. No, 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 no. March of 2020. No, oh, 2020. 2020. So, yeah, gosh. 2020. Oh, gosh. Yeah, this is before the yeah. English release. Yeah. yeah. And I joined the Discord, and uh, there was actually only half of the starter decks revealed for each color blue, blue, yellow, and red. There was only like <laughs> half of those cards revealed. And uh, I kind of teamed up with like uh a guy at the time he was a french french guy he was uh translating for the server basically all the cards and we were playing on tts oh, and okay. and then every other like player from wherever else europe japan also used this tts mod and we played digimon and that's like pretty much all i did for my free time and then uh the 2020 discord got bigger and me and one of the admins actually developed a very early judge program. We designed a test to kind of like have like the rule experts, quote unquote, um, in the server to help out players, uh, basically just early on. That way they felt a little bit more comfortable when asking questions about certain stuff they were unsure of. Right. And then when I started this, that's kind of where everything kind of everything Went up from there. Uh, after I started the test, um, there I found out there was like multiple tournament organizers that had joined the servers because they were hosting their own tournaments, PPG, Core, and they were trying to like do like this random offline, unofficial events. And PPG was mainly the one of them. So I reached out to George PPG, and I was just like, "Hey, I, I judge. I like." developed i'm like one of the leads for the judge program i guess for that server for digimon if you want to let me judge one of your events i'd love to do it help you out and he had nobody at the time because george was very all he had was dbs yeah so Mm. pretty much i just helped him with an online tournament and the rest is history after that man i um just started judging all of his events and he had me on for the, pretty much all of 2021's Digimon 2022. And then when One Piece got announced, he was like, I need a One Piece judge. So I was like, all right, I'll do it. So I just started head judging that. <laughs> oh, you got judge do, One Piece as well. Okay. I didn't. Yeah, I had, had judge. Yep. Yep. I do One Piece and Digimon mainly. Those are the two. I'm trying to get into Union right now. I'm going to take some time to sit down and learn that game some more. And then I'll do I'll do that too. But um but that's pretty much it from in terms of like how it started for me for Digimon, man. Um, that's cool. So, well, how did you come across Digimon? Like, are you a Digimon fan? Oh, like? I'm a huge Digimon fan, man. Oh, I, man. I grew like, I mean, the typical, like, I grew up with it when I was a kid. I watched it before school. I watched it after school. Right. Um, 
uh, there wasn't many kids I knew who watched it. And yep. when the card game, when I learned that there was a card game, I played that. And I used to bring it to like my Sunday school and I would play against the kids and I would smoke them because <laughs> I, I was like so sweaty. And all these people were like, eh, little Ogumon. I'm like sweaty as hell, destroying them. <laughs> like, but uh, that's how it started. And then, uh, yeah, as soon as the card game dropped, I, I freaked. I was like, oh, my God, dude, I finally have like a card game I can jump into because I did uh, Yu-Gi-Oh for years. Mm-hmm. For a real long time, right. I, did com- I did competitive Yu-Gi-Oh. It wasn't a whole lot of fun, but it scratched <laughs> it's, that. It scratched the itch. But then now that there's an IP that I was like, I can get behind and, and enjoy. I was like, all right, I'm all about it. So was Digimon your first judging foray ever? No, Yu-Gi-Oh was. Okay, Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. So I'm curious to know, like, in terms of judging Yu-Gi-Oh, and go like just everything that you've done for Konami events and then coming to judge Digimon and Bandai events, like Mm. how different is it? And like, what are, like, what, what do you, what have you learned previously from judging Yu-Gi-Oh that you apply over here to judging Digimon? Um, There's, there's some similarities because Bandai is relatively new to the card game industry and they've, they've definitely taken bits and pieces from all different card games, Pokemon mainly, and then Magic and Yu-Gi-Oh! Because they're like, obviously their biggest competitors. But I'd have to right. say, in terms of the difference for judging for Konami, it's, I would say, there's more money in the Bandai like side of it. Really? But yeah, surprisingly, like, like when I was judging for, uh, when I was judging for Yu-Gi-Oh! It, it wasn't, it, they would give you like, a box or two and then maybe and then you get some hourly pay or you'd get like a play mat and then your hourly pay which the play mat still sold for a little bit but like and then you got your i i guess you got like some judge stuff exclusive stuff but it didn't feel like it because i felt like everybody had it um <laughs> i would say budget wise i'd have to say konami is far better than what uh band i had mm-hmm. um uh I felt like they were okay with like allocating X amount of dollars for a venue because typically they're okay with having these small t- these stores host regionals, whereas right. Bandai is a little more ske- less. They're a little bit more skeptical about that stuff. They'd rather have like one big tournament organizer allocate yeah. a certain budget for it, and then you have to do X amount of judges based on the players. Which there's a massive difference because like three hundred, I think three hundred fifty players for a Yu-Gi-Oh event, you get like eight to 10 judges with a head judge and assistant head judge. And mm-hmm. you and Bandai games, it's like five judges five, with one yeah. assistant. Yeah. And then maybe you'll have a head judge. So maybe <laughs> seven <laughs> judges. But even like Yu-Gi-Oh, like especially, I know even when I play way back, there was like five, 600 people, regional events happening yeah. and not just like 350. And it was like a, a ton of judges there. And I, now I seen, I mean, not recently, but I know I heard regional is being over at 1,000 easily yeah. for uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! compared to mm-hmm. us where we're just at a 250 max c- cap for some reason. <laughs> I, I don't, it's it's kind of a, in my opinion, it's a favoritism compared to like One Piece because One Piece, like yeah. having, a two, having a 256 regional for One Piece would be absurd. That's like insane. Right. Why, would you, why would you have it so low? It's like 512 is the minimum. Digimon... It's not as popular, so that's why I think they've chosen. So really, you think it's it's that much of a difference? Yeah. Oh yeah. So I have a, I have a question on that because I know so like one well, you know it you're a judge obviously one of the biggest things is that Digimon has had lower cap counts, but I have always said it's not the tos that we should be yelling at because the tos don't set the cap numbers. That's a Bandai thing. Is mm-hmm. that true? Yes, Can you speak to yeah, that? Yeah, it's it's a Bandai thing. They they have a preference of how much they want. There's there's a little bit of pull with tos there. They're able to um, kind of set up how they want it because one, they pick the venue that they're going to do it at. And, mm-hmm. um, and then it kind of gets, um, sometimes they'll plan around like, uh, for for right now as what well, i mean as far as the know for the budget for this year it's it's like a lot of digimon 
DBS and then DBS uh, Fusion World are all, all those regionals will more than likely be together because right. the caps for them and then the player I guess to count for them is relatively lower than what One Piece is and then One Piece gotcha. is pretty much all by itself. So yeah, I would have to say it's it's I can definitely confidently say that it's it's not mainly that it's like ninety percent Bandai, ten percent TO. Yeah, Do you that's think definitely if, been like if they were get to give Digimon higher caps, we would hit those higher caps, and they're just kind of like, yeah, eh, I think it's not popular, so we don't think it, we're going, we we're don't hit, trust it as much. We're hitting the caps though. That's the thing. Right. Like we're doing. And people we're are doing complaining. Well. There's no not yeah. enough space. So if, you, if we bump it to like two fifty six to like five twelve, do you think Digimon will be able to like hit those caps with no problem at regions? I think so. I think yeah. I think we can. I think location, location, location is a big thing. So it's like, yeah. of course, because like. I'll be honest, like I'm in Virginia, so like we can have oh, like, maybe we can have like a decent size regional here. We could probably maybe have like a 400 man regional, I would say, because you got Maryland, D.C., but like anywhere, California, Miami, New York, New Jersey, PA, um, maybe some Texas. I think all those are good spots for like a 512. Um, yeah, and, and no cap, and I mean, they'll, they'll, you'll go to at least ninety-eight percent cap. You mean like, I, I, I think we. It, it's unfortunate that they have this two fifty-six right now because they're unsure of it capping out. They're a little afraid, in my opinion. So, so what is the like? So what from from your experience? Like, why would why put a cap in the first place? I guess that kind of sounds I, wrong to say. I think but. it's. I think it's kind of a budget thing, but I don't really know. That's actually something that I've always been curious about. I felt like maybe maybe it's some skepticism that they're unsure of. I personally think they should just uncap it and be like, hey, look, we'll allocate however much we we get for however many players we get. I think that right. would be a little bit better. I think online, I think all online events should be uncapped. That's just me. Um, I think it's a little easier, but, um, yeah. I mean, it makes sense. It's like, Hey, like uh, one piece you want to cap. I get it. Cap one piece because yeah. there were just, if you didn't, that it would be crazy. like a nightmare, yeah. but like, we're just a bunch of Digimon <laughs> players. <laughs> Pun <intended>. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> we're just, we're just a bunch of Digimon players, you know? Like, so what if we get 500 people? That's, that's how much money for you to Bandai. And you know, obviously the TO as well. Like, I just, I've never really understood, it. maybe in the beginning when things were, you know, harder to get into and like COVID was a thing. So there's it's, all like the supply chain stuff. But I mean, it comes down to like money as well. Like, I don't really know the full details of Bandai's reasoning, but um, I can say that I, I think it's more of them unsure of whether they can get a lot of people or that's having so having the budget. Because like if they plan for a regional, that's. They're like, all right, this regional is going to be in Charlotte, North Carolina, and it's a six fifteen. I don't know, six hundred and fifteen player cap. Mm -hmm. They're they're probably only going to get maybe three eighty four twenty. You think so? Because that's a yeah. I, I feel I like think, that's a good like in between from like the northeast not, and like south true. side, right? True, but I you have to realize that like because in terms of. In Go terms ahead, of hopefully. money, no, you're fine. In terms of money for prizing and stuff, the only thing you're getting from regionals now is the serialized Omni, which for sure. is just came out. And now there's a reason to go be competitive at regionals. For years, it was show up, get your pack, get your finalist pack, and then get your mat. And then obviously yeah. you got top 16, you got your invite. That was really all people wanted. Now there's a reasoning, which I think is... Uh, a good step forward for increasing these mm -hmm. caps for Digimon because oh, I yeah. do want to see these events. I, I think honestly, all regional, all in-person regionals need to be five twelve because they're. I'm telling you, though, I know they'll hit at least. I mean, least 90%. Nats was what like a thousand ish people. Yeah, almost? it was. Yeah, it was a thousand. No, it was a thousand. It was like, or it, technically, after everybody like was finished, I think it was nine eighty five. Was the was the total? 985 people for an event that everybody qualified for that they didn't have to pay for. So that's one thing. Majority. But I think it was, I think it was seven. No, 65% were the, were just sh like 
people who signed up, not people who right, actually uh, earned their invites. Open invite, right? Yep. Yeah. So it's like <laughs> if if you can get a thousand people showing up for Card Game Fest, I'm sure the total capacity there mm-hmm. was, you know, somewhere along the lines of four, five thousand people, all yeah. inclusive of like One Piece, Dragon Ball, and all yep. that. It's like. I agree. If five twelve just it makes sense, and if sure, you might not hit five twelve, but 400, 450 is still a good ass number. Oh, for sure. Great. And on top of that, California. I mean, I mean, it was in LA. You mean like? Yeah, it's, I, it's a I huge. Live in Pennsylvania, we, uh, so we, we flew fucking there. flew. <laughs> yeah, and we hated it's, it. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's that's another reason. Like California is massively, it's very populated. So that's another reason why they were able to get like a lot of people. Uh, especially for local, like just locals. Like, I mean, yeah. I don't know how many people I met. They were like, oh yeah, I drove up from Northern California. Oh, I'm over in Arizona. Oh, I'm in Oregon. Yeah. Like people who were like not even six, seven hours away, which is still pretty good in terms of a drive. But like, you're definitely going to get, it's, if it was like Colorado, you're not, I don't, I don't think you're getting like some parts of Colorado, I don't think you're gonna get 900 people. But that's just yes. maybe. It's only maybe for uh, one piece. Your I only agree. chance. Your only chance is Denver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that too. But no, major cities. I think major cities is where a lot of these Ma- need to be held. Yeah, and on major top cities of that, make sense. On top of that, like I'm able to see like how much we're spending. Like, like, and I have an idea of what these tos spend on the venues, and these venues are not cheap. Yeah. They they actually they will make you pay for obviously for the space, how long you are there, the tables, set up, trash, every outlet you use, they also charge for that. Typ- Sheesh, typically the, the typically the average price that you are paying for internet in most of these places, just to have a Wi Fi, just for Wi Fi, is about three to seven thousand dollars. Wow. Like, I'm not is kidding it, you. Is it that is, why Baby and I was being robbery. so cheap with the, uh, at first with, like, streaming and stuff in uh, Nats? It's, it's tough. It's not, I mean, like, I guess they could fork it over, but, like, in their eyes, it's like, why? Why would I? Well, why yeah. would, why should we do no, this? No, well, it makes but sense like, because if tickets are 30 bucks and you have 256 players, that's the cost of Wi-Fi alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. That's really? nuts. Yeah, and then, nuts. yeah so just it's, negging. Yeah, it's, it's not, uh, that's another thing that, a lot of people don't see it. There's a lot that people don't know. Hey, goes but if you events. if you raise the cap, then you know, know you can afford I'm, the internet. <laughs> but then, yeah, but then but they then, need then, to pay for <laughs> more no, space, so more also, time. It's not even the space. So when you when you set up these uh, spot, when you like, you have to sometimes do. You have to talk to these uh, venues three months in advance. Yeah. And of course, like, of course. Right. And they're gonna be like, all right, what kind of event it is? You're like, okay, it's a card game tournament. They're like, all right, how many people? And you're like, okay, uh, it's. Like if you were to say, oh, it <laughs> might probably. be 500. Oh, it yeah. might be 300 because after it's almost all across America, all convention centers, once you're over 500 player peoples or people in a space, you have to have security and metal detectors, mm, which course. is, which is then so that expensive. Cost. Yeah. yeah. And that's just like, that's a huge cost. But I mean, it all comes down to, I think, I think it's a slow roll. I think we should just take some time. Uh, find good spots in major cities that are relatively, especially I think for East Coast. East Coast really needs something in the Northeast. Um, yeah, hard Jersey, to say. Jersey, New York, PA. Um, I think all those spots really need like good, good tos to rise up and just host events there because I know they all will fill up because that is such a condensed area. Because you to literally say. have like you're what eight hours in in a I don't know in. Eight hour. If you, if you were to just do Jersey, yeah, like about, eight, uh, eight uh, hours north, south, east, and west, you're going to be in Rhode Island, Connecticut, New York, upstate. Like you're easily, yeah. 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 Like uh, so, I think that area, and it sucks too because the, the venues over there are also insanely expensive. Yeah. But, right. Um, I, hey, I remember back in the day in uh, Yu Gi Oh regionals, they used to host them in uh, hotel lobbies. You got to do that yeah, again. Yeah, no, well, that's, <laughs> that's another thing that I'm really excited about. This uh, the new regionals that Bandai is rolling out for in store mm-hmm. regionals. Uh, mm-hmm. The store has yeah. to have like be able to host 64 man or 64 has, spots. Has, yep, it has to be able to host uh, 64 people. The store's rank with TCG Plus needs to be relatively up there, and then um, it also needs to be in good standings with. Bandai in general, but yeah, like that's a whole application process that I haven't even been able to like. I don't know the full details of it, but I just know that they are going to be picky about it, which kind of sucks because 
I didn't really mind the store championships that gave invites. I just think they should have maybe lessened how many stores were able to have because it was a little chaotic last year. Mm. Or not last year, mm. the year before years, that. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was like 1,300 people showed up and Bandai just, or they capped it. It was like 13 or 1,400 people had invites and they had to just hard cap at 1,100 and they couldn't Jeez. host it anymore. Oh, so, yeah. I didn't know that. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was another thing that they had to do. They had to hard cap at 1,100 and they cut off a lot of people. There was some people that showed up. They were like, I literally showed up and I can't even play, man. Like, what the hell? I have my invite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's tough. It is, is tough. That, yep. Is that part of the reason why they took away the um, the store championships? Because I've uh, only heard like rumors wise. Do you know anything about it or no? I believe uh, that's some things I can't go into full details about. But um, I think I think I can honestly say that it's it's it was an unplanned. Uh, they, they just weren't Accident. expecting that many people. Yeah, they just weren't entirely expecting in that. And then um, dealing with 1,300 people, or like or a, a mass quantity of like over a thousand people, it's it's hectic. It's not easy. Yeah. On top oh, of that, yeah. sure. your software has to be able to take it too, because Best Coast pairings is not very good after a thousand. You got RK9, <laughs> which you is don't terrible. Say. <laughs> no, like I hate to oh say it, gosh. but most of the software, like I'm not I'm not trying to throw like shade on any of these softwares, but like. After about six, seven hundred players, it's it's hard. It lags and it takes forever. And then when it breaks, it's the worst to get. We it. saw it that. Up. We yeah, saw that. It's the worst. So <laughs> hey, we had it easy. The One Piece players, bro. Yeah. Oh I, my God. Poor One Piece I, players. I know. I know. Almost uh, probably. I'd say maybe seventy-five percent of the judges that were over there, because uh, I staffed them multiple times at PPG, but. Um, Man, I went over there just to check on him. I felt so bad. I'm like, hey guys, like it's all right. <laughs> you guys will get through. You'll get this. through it. <laughs> yeah. But I remember talk, talking to Zach and I walked after I walked over, uh, coming back from the one piece spot and I looked at Zach. I was like, dude, we gotta start on time and we gotta end on time, man. I was like, we we gotta we gotta show this up, dude. We gotta show the superior game, baby. <laughs> he was like he was like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. And we did, man. We had a we had about close hour delay maybe something 45 minute hour delay and we still ended on time man yeah, yeah. it was phenomenal so good job you question, guys. <laughs> appreciate it yeah for sure uh, another question i have is how so another thing i like to say or i usually like we don't like shit on bandai all the time here at this uh at digital, pod, the digital <laughs> podcast it's but, mainly uh, barney just just for oh clarification I, I do call bandai out for a lot of shit so like one thing i'm curious on i've always said um, I think, well, so I don't know anything about like the way that Konami hosts tournaments. Uh, obviously like Konami does, a, I, I, does Konami do almost everything in house in terms of like, you know, planning the events, staffing the events, you know, running all the logistics for that. Whereas Bandai puts the onus of that on the TOs to handle. Well, no, uh, Konami's the similar, they, they, they have. They have basically an application process that TOs will go through and then mm -hmm. they bid on where they want to host regionals or if they're able to host a regional, where they want to host it. And then they pay for the space and then Konami will allocate X amount of dollars to them and their prizing and then go from there. That's it's it's similar that way. It's it's okay. not too different. OK, so then how I mean, obviously, you know, pre one piece, I'll say pre one piece. Because I feel like the the addition of One Piece just like screws everything up because it's like, all right, cool. You know, we had a million dollars and now seven hundred thousand dollars is allocated to One Piece and the rest of the games can share the 300 scraps. Um, but prior to One Piece getting added, like. What was I guess, like, what was what were some things that you felt that they could improve upon um, just like in terms of being, you know, the maker of the game and with TPG being like one of the most prominent TOs in the space. Um, I'm curious, like how Ooh, who's, who's at my door? I think that's my daughter at my door. Hold on one second. <laughs> you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> All right. While we wait for this time, what's your favorite <laughs> deck in the game right now? Favorite red hybrid. Red hybrid uh, or red I'm hybrid? A I'm, a, I'm a degenerate. I'm a degenerate. Oh my God. Don't, don't <laughs> let Barney know this because he's going to freak out. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, I hate dealing with 
with a lot of bullshit that this game has in terms of like decks. <laughs> Are you talking about like I, like security stuff? Is that well, why? even so before you just, you know, even before that really oh, like okay. security control? I mean, like Pete brought it back, dude. Pete literally <laughs> yeah, put security. Like even though Pete was a phenomenal he plays that player, twenty four seven. He plays it much differently than the average, I guess, security control player. Like he, like I watched Pete probably fifty percent of the time while he's in top sixty four. And he did not play that deck even remotely like the average security control player would. Because a lot of people play the play that deck like they're just expecting it to carry them. And that's the unfortunate <laughs> part about security control is people just expect it just to like it, the deck is going to beat your opponent. It's kind of brainless. <laughs> right, right. But right. Like, the Pete, option, option win me game. Yeah, like like Pete was active. He he didn't he actually took his time planned out like like a lot of his moves and you can see it and pizza pizza Pete's a pretty good player and I, I i thought that was the one difference i'd have to say versus everyone else so him playing that deck brought that deck back out <laughs> it was so i had to i had to keep up my red hybrid i was like all right i gotta go i gotta go slam these people dude i'm so over this <laughs> no that's fair uh that's why i got into playing fenry a lot recently because mm. i just got tired like i was playing against mirage one time at a case tournament it's our boy gino i was playing him we were both undefeated up until that point i swung into secure and i hit a fucking full moon meteor impact and i was at like negative two memory and i was like <laughs> uh. yeah that's the card you can bounce my fender back to hand and i guess my turn ends and then of course you have the nuts because it's not like he was like oh i know he's gonna pop off next turn i was like he has the potential to pop off next turn he fucking popped off next turn yeah. he raised like a gao gamon and all the oh, way up into burst mode and he was like how many cards do you have in i was like enough <laughs> enough, <laughs> enough dude do your thing replay thomas make swing you draw a card suspense, burst suspense. mode gonna bottom yeah. deck i was like good lord that's i still have five security it's it's that's the one frustrating thing i'd have to say that's that's kind of going on about digimon like my i i love the game but it's it's hard to like support it right now because oh in terms of like competitively it's it's getting to that point where power creep is so so brutal that we're looking at like broken cards and we're like ah that's okay all right yeah, and then like I see what you're and saying. then, and then you're on top saying. of that like these decks are getting brainless <laughs> like they're just brain dead decks that's another thing that i really can't stand like i know i'm playing red hybrid but like like that's there's not many other options i'm picking the lesser of the evil really in, in my opinion because there's a, some decks that are just like it, it's just getting to the point where i'm like all right dude like it, it sucks because you'll lose to bad players in that I mean, that's why. I, that's oh like, yeah, it's it's very frustrating <laughs> because you can see it when you lose when you lose to just an RNG or like a shitty the just one piece sack. problem you mean? Yeah, <laughs> just a <laughs> shitty sack. It's just not fun. And I think that's I told Zach I was like, dude, we need to ban everything. We need to just ban. I want to go back to BT8, the best meta in this game. It was the best. BT8 was like. By far, the, oh, I loved it. BT8 was the reign of Blue Hybrid. Arguably, and, some would say that was our worst meta. That's that's crazy because Blue Hybrid. I like. I've made this argument to so many people. Blue Hybrid was not a deck that you could just pick up and and win with. You uh, had I to. Agree with that, yeah. You have to yeah. like. I know the deck is extremely strong, but you have to pilot it correctly in order to win, and that's why it was so good because. Jackson Hong and the oh, other yeah. and as well as other players picked up that deck uh Chung Man they picked it up and they destroyed people because they're very good players and they think outside of the box and they're not the typical like just the average player that just is playing at locals like these guys yeah. are grinding games and they're mastering their matchups and that's the difference and then they played that deck to a uh, razor sharp efficiency and they're winning so people were just mad that they would go into a game thinking that their deck is going to win. And then Blue Hybrid literally just shut it all down. Oh, you can't attack, you can't attack, you can't attack. Sling, 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 GG. Like that was, that was it. It still sucked, but I mean, like, that's just my opinion. It was definitely a more skillful time. Yeah, 100%. There wasn't as many, you know, 
crutches. Yeah, because you could like, say BT nine. We just you. All right, I got my <laughs> I got my stack. Raise, swing, 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 swing. All your security. <laughs> Good yep. Oh, oh, you didn't see your stack before I did? Oh, yep. that sucks, dude. Whoops. <laughs> My bad, bro. Yep. Good yeah. game. I it guess I'm the better nine. player. Yeah, it's just that, that was so that was like that's that man. Oh my god. Bt9 was a time to be I alive. Hated, I, hated that. I hated that meta. I hated that meta. Dan oh, loved boy. playing against I Alpha Mon. I love I Alpha Mon too. Alpha, Alpha, Mon. Alpha Mon is my Mon. favorite Digimon. Alpha Mon is my all-time favorite Digimon, and I loved Alpha Mon as a deck, but I knew it was the dumbest shit ever. Just swinging oh, plus one. It was like, come on, dude. Like, why? No, I, 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 I swear, like, I, I, or you can, it was just the dumbest thing yeah. ever. Because it's like, game all right, I'll pass turn. Game memory. Like, game back seven on, memory and do everything all over again. Great. Yeah, great. Like, whatever, bro. Like, you can... Yeah, I, I just... There's some people that just wanted to like slap their deck off the table. Like, just get the fuck out of here, dude. You're trash. <laughs> I know that sounds bad to say. It, oh, oh my, my god. god, that shit was so frustrating. Bro. That shit was so frustrating. Oh man. All right, so all I have right, two right. follow up questions uh, for you then. Back to I guess oh, whatever Barney's yeah, question was. No, what, what was your question prior that I derailed it because you left? I don't care. That that, that question's <laughs> not important now because now <laughs> yeah. I want to know. Now I have now two we get more to the Digimon questions. part. Now we get to the Digimon. Yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> First, I, I don't know which one I want to ask first, so I, I'll ask this one first. How do you feel about turn two OTK Fenrir Lugamon Takumi Kazuchi? It's horrible. It's horrible, man. That deck shouldn't be, that shouldn't exist, man. So, like, man, deck's crazy. I, I know when Fenrir came out, I was like, what the, f what do you mean? <laughs> the I opponent's can, turn yeah. doesn't start till they're at yeah, yeah, like, more that's, like, no, that, that's what I'm saying. We looked at that card and we're like, Oh yeah, I can't wait to play this deck. That's so broken. Like what, dude? You mean my turn doesn't start until I hit three? So you can just sit here and swing and then bring out your stupid eight cats and kill me? Like, no, bro. Like, get the hell out of here, dude. I hate you. Like, no. Like, this is the dumbest shit ever, bro. It's no, it's just not fun. It's not, not fun. Wrong. It not doesn't wrong. it doesn't it bring me any enjoyment. I don't feel like I lost to skill. I just lost to this stupid dog <laughs> that played out a bunch of cards and it just swung. It was like cool. OTK. That's how I feel about fucking Melga, bro. <laughs> Melga oh with promo God, sec how... plus one. Oh my good lord. That's how I felt about that deck post BT9 hits. Uh, yeah. Cause I was like, cool, everything else got slapped up. They still have they had promo for like a little bit. A lot well, I don't of remember it. when promo got guy hit. Oh, it was a while. They had, they had it. They had promo for a bit, and I was just like, "You're so fucking dumb with your sec plus one ass." I'm just gonna swing two <laughs> checks on suspend. Oh, T he blitz omni for game. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> no, like I I I, I make this I, at locals. I kind of get harped on just a little bit whenever I mention like stupid decks just being brainless, and they're like, "You play red hybrid." I'm like, "Yeah." That's fine. They're like, get rid of Takuya. It's and I'm like, to be okay. Stupid, you know? Yeah, like, I'm mean, like, I, I understand. Like, I mean, all you have to do is hit Takuya to one and the deck's dead. That's it. The whole deck's gone. You know what I mean? Saying. That's all. And yeah. that, because Takuya's cracked. Because not, not making it mandatory to go into Emperor makes it a billion times more like. Oh, yeah. Like, oh. Dude, I'm going to stack so a whole bunch of heritables. Are you Evo into Emperor? If you got me at three, man, if you got me at three, Digivolve, put everything under there. No options activate. Atomic Inferno, Atomic Inferno. Yep. Oh, Swing. Time. Oh, you block? Dang. I gain six memory. Like, that's so <laughs> stupid. That's right, so right. stupid. Dude. And Atomic Inferno well. was. Yeah, like, what the For its time, Atomic, Atomic Inferno was a stupid card. Gain three memory on block? What Correct. the yeah. fuck? No, For I, a one cost yeah, card? Yeah, that, but I, I, I liked it because it punished the, at the time it came out, it punished the really defensive decks yeah. that were really annoying to deal with, man. Because, like, I don't know, like, I felt like back then it was just a little. You use you use more blockers in your deck. You had them out. Oh yeah, often, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah. Like especially even big blockers and then and black as well. Black was definitely like blocker heavy during that format. So I, I get why it came out, but like the fact that it stacks makes it so much worse. It's like ice it's like, wall. What? Yeah, dude. Like yeah. what? It's so. It's crazy. like Atomic Inferno, Atomic Inferno, and just for good measure, 
Atomic Inferno. I'm now plus 9k on my 2k flame on. Mm. So I was sweet for 11k on four checks. No, dude. Fucking flame on. Stupid. Yo, Barney has PTSD because one of our friends used to play like old school Red High. He did it. And that was what won him the game because he was like, all right. Tom Inferno, Tom Inferno, Tom Inferno. I block on a flame on memories. Yeah. On a flame on, too. That's the funniest part. I uh, I went to a tournament and that was that was the condition I had to win. I, I couldn't digivolve and I had two rookies and he had three life and I was like Bet. I I was like I was at three memory, I was like I have to atomic inferno twice on this little booger and hope that I check and like yeah. he was at the seven K, I was like seven K sec plus two, swing. First check <laughs> first check was a was a tamer. I said, Oh, it's good game, buddy. I was like, that's it, that's all I needed. Just the first yeah. check to survive. Yeah, for sure. Second check, second check, he he got it and I was like, Oh yeah, you're dead, dude. You're you're dead. And then he was he was mad salty. Oh, mad salty. My but God, I mean like that's funny. So frustrating. For what it's worth, though, like I give Red Hybrid that. Like Red Hybrid has always been an aggro, you know, sec plus one as deck. Exactly, it played what it needs to, be. to what it was. For sure, we just have some decks that do s- some things outside the realm of what the fuck they should be doing. Like Alpha Mon with sec plus one, or Melga with sec plus one, or Grandis with sec plus one. You see the common trend here. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that sec <laughs> plus one is a red keyword per se. But some of those decks shouldn't have had as easy access to they did with the unsuspending no, mechanics course. that they had at the time. Of course. So that was a fucking nightmare. No, Even Red Hybrid doesn't do that no, shit. Restanding well, is so ridiculous. That's why, like, I, I have to have Blitz Omni in my, in my Red Hybrid deck. I think it's like, when you're... Oh, yeah. It's, it sucks. When you grind with Red, I think it's the worst. So there's some times where I've, like, scraped. i gotten rid of all the security, and now I just need to wait until I can Emperor and then Blitz Omni for game. Like that's that's the only restanding that deck really has, but that's that still carries the deck forward in the meta. I you know, I hate red hybrid, but I only hate it because <laughs> He gets smacked up by every time. <laughs> because every time he played, I guess it's getting worse. So it's often. getting worse now. Oh, now, yeah. the, now the ancient gray well not the new ancient gray. New ancient gray sucks, but like the new, the, the new BT, Mon, right? No, it's the BT7 Burning Gray Mon. Oh my God. Oh, that the card, one that pops the yeah. 4K or less? No, 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 yeah, it pops the 4K, but it also, when attacking Evo and then reduce the cost by one. So you can basically, you can raise your Flame Mon now, okay? Promote with the Goonie or the promo Goonie, Digivolve for two. And then Evo with Burning Gray over it for free. Yeah. Swing, reduce cost by one. Uh, and then, or and then you could do, uh, if you, you could also, yeah, that's what it is. You could do the Aguni for zero when digivolving, warp into ancient for three. Aguni promos under it, the inheritable, reduced yeah. by two. Then you have an ancient gray that's checking three, four times, I think. Oh, I, can't, yeah. I, I, I gotta, I gotta see it in front of me to break it down, but I, I think it's, Kinda yeah, you're talking about the the Agunimon that digivolves for, or whichever one when digivolves attacking. on top of the tamer. Yeah. It's when attacking, it will it will warp into ancient. To gray, the but, ancient gray, yeah. And then there's the you would have to like because you have to do. Uh, I think it's I can't remember. I got I got to look it up. But that's pretty much it. You can have a stack you're doing of, like three or four checks or something yeah. with that ancient gray stack. So yeah. ridiculous. I, I, and then. And um, whether options activate or not, I don't, I don't care. As long as I get my first three, you're dead. <laughs> I probably sure. hate Red Hybrid because it stems back to me getting smacked up by Ancient Grey. <laughs> and Ancient Grey was also a pain in my fucking ass because yeah, it it's like, cool, I'm going to sit my... This was pre-BT9. I'm going to sit yeah. my ass in the back until I build my god stack, yeah. Ancient Grey. Then I'm just going to come up checks. and smack you for five checks and then <laughs> oh, and for don't G- activate. G- and options don't activate <laughs> and you can't do anything about it. Oh, did you play a blocker? No problem, Gaia Force. <laughs> Oh yeah, he just like it, it was or a blitz on me, and then like oh I cleared our security. Oh you blocked. All right, whatever. I'll just do something else. Yeah, blitz right. on me. Check I'll just crimson else. blaze. I'll, I'll get that blocker out the oh, way. Did yeah. you play two blockers? Sea blaze, dude. Thank you for the that four cost card. crimson blaze. I love sea. <laughs> sea blaze is probably one of the strongest red options. Right, actually. It's probably been out forever, but like it, I'd have to it, say it's I would put that at number one and 100%. the new number um, one. Phoenix oh, yeah, Mon man. at number two. Uh, what is it? Meteor? Wing? Meteor Wing? Is that what it is? The, the one that like, you one? pop 15. Yeah, you pop 15 carry less, but like for every security your opponent has, you, re- you reduce that by like 2,000. So like in Red Hybrid, it's like cool. 
I'm gonna take three checks from you, and then I'm gonna pop all your 11k or less for only four cost. Oh yeah, it's a four cost. Yeah, yeah. Delete one of yeah. your opponent's Digimon with 15 DP or less for each of your opponent's security cards. Remove 2,000 uh, from this. So early game was sucks, positions. but like Effective. you yes. could you could get that mid game and easy red for red hybrid. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> To a, an atomic inferno on a Naguni means you're taking out two security. Cool, I got nine K removal for four cost. Right. Yeah, those two like cards are sure. so disgusting in that deck. But I always say that if there's one thing I hate is whenever I see a red <laughs> hybrid, let's play that motherfucking card because I'm like, God damn it! I don't just got to deal yeah. with the Emperor Gray pop, and I got now I got they got option removal. I got to deal with uh, too. Yeah, I just, I'm just want not getting away. I with just it. want to ban everything, man. Put Takuya to one. I want to put. I just want to put everything to one, man. I'm like, so, okay. So that's oh, the next ban, question. Ban HBD. So get HBD what? out of here. Like I've been, been saying this since day I've been, one. I've been screaming at Zach for literally <laughs> for a year and a half. I'm like, dude, can we just get this dumb card out of here? Like, I've no been saying that forever cards. as well. I don't care if it's not relevant or not. And I'm sure the green stands in your comments eventually going to be like, yo, that Nightmare guy sucks. Like, I hate it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> they, they, they like, hear me. Anytime we have a ban talk, like... It doesn't matter what it is. We could be like predicting. We could be doing yet. anything. I'm just like <laughs> HPD zero, right? HPD zero. Because <laughs> this just, just makes no sense. It just shouldn't. It's it's. There shouldn't be a card that's zero cost and reducing that that, that much. much. For that's five. Insane. And all five you need is nuts. All you need is to be digivolving from a green Digimon. Makes yeah. it way way better. So it's for like, sure. Ah, dude. Why? Why is this card a thing? Yeah. So, but that was the next question I had. If you were, because obviously you see the competitive environment, so you know what it's like. And as a judge, you know, I, I trust your impartialness. Only, oh, only yeah. a tiny, tiny bit of bias. What cards would you ban right now oh or restrict? God. Oh my God. What's uh, your most problematic cards in the game? I think... Let me let me pull Digimon card that dev. I gotta He's like, let me let me get the yeah. let me start getting the list. Shout out, there's, shout out to my boy Orange. Many. Shout out to my boy <laughs> Orange on DC Dev, bro. I know. I, I see a lot of people use other sites, and I'm just like, why are you using that site? What? Why don't you just use DigimoncCard.dev? Yeah, like, that's, that's a fact. So much better. I, I, I'm I'm never use anything others. I live yeah, by Orange, that website. <laughs> Orange is a is a close friend who I've, I've known for for a while. He's he's pretty cool, man. I I, I like I just rather use his website. I've heard him. It's so user friendly, easy. It yeah, is for sure. Yeah. Easy to Digimon get to. Digimon is so difficult to search for. What the hell I'm trying to look for? Right. Whereas card dev, I'm just like cool. This so card. I'll go into BT17 because that's the most recent stuff. But I would I would actually restrict. I would pre hit all of the Ace level sevens to. Whoa! One. Don't yep. do that to me already. Would, wow. No, come on. see, see, see. This is the no. brain rot. This is what happens. <laughs> brain rot. You get so you're like, oh, but I want to play Omni. Card. But no, I want to play Omni. <laughs> Omni's whatever, man. Shine is. I hate Shine. Shine. Yeah, shine. The, the, shine that card I can is so foresee crack. that being I an issue. Shine is crazy. Hey, that card when i found out that it was coming out i was like why why does this deck even need more more oh, did support you, did did you try to delete my shine that's okay i'll bounce a marcus, marcus oh i marcus cool i'll just the, burst into the shine that's gonna afterwards? replay the marcus <laughs> like where is that guy oh my god the bt bt 13 marcus i would hit to one I would immediately really hit you BT hit the 13? memory setter. Yeah, I would hit the Marcus. I, I, would, I, I think he's not the BT12 one. That the one everybody says they should get hit. Where's, they get hit? where's the, I gotta see the BT12 one? I, I can't remember. I think I might. Be That's the one that lets you Evo for free. I'm we in the swings. Mixing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one. Oh my god, okay, get okay, that okay. fucker out of here. Okay. No, no, no. That's I got mixed up. I, I so I was gonna say BT13 hit, seems a little bit innocent. I would hit, yeah, I would yeah, hit yeah. BT, BT12 to, to one. I would hit. Um, I would ban HBD. I would hit. I would pre-hit all the aces to one. I would. I would put Takuya BT7 to one. I would put Koji from BT7 to one. I would put. What else? I would probably just. I would ban Apocly. I, I hate that card. <laughs> I, Leave I, my I, apocalypse yeah, alone. This guy, this guy's on brain rot <laughs> to the max. I enjoy the, the poor little guy, man. I mean, poor little guy. I enjoy seeing guy. my no, dirty, card, disgusting little one. Hey, Dark Masters was my that one card. of my favorites, you know, villains in cool. Digimon. Oh, so I used to enjoy yeah, playing cool. it. <laughs> yeah, that card's garbage. 
That card shouldn't <laughs> exist. That card needs to be banned. I would actually hit a lot of um, the Machindra, a lot of Machindra support. I think there's some some cards that I think that are just that make the like the God stack of Machindra like too powerful because it just gets to the point where you have that out. And I would hit Analog Man to one, and then. Yeah, I, I, there, there's there's numerous cards. I could go here all day, honestly, and just name off cards that even if it's not topping, I just think the card is problematic when some when the deck or no, whatever gets support. That's a good point. Because like it's it's getting to that point, like I said, where power creep is just so excessive. It's we're just looking at broken stuff like, oh, that's okay. You know, that's gonna do okay. But it's we get cards like Fenry and we're like, all right, yeah, this card is great. Like or or yeah, I just I just can't deal with it all. I can't keep up. Oh, it's, it's a dumbass card and a dumbass deck for sure. <laughs> memory. Yeah. Like, it just I mean, made no sense. I don't know why they thought that I was okay. Like let's, the whole point of the memory gauge is to be like a balanced thing where <laughs> all right, you pass zero into your opponent's turn. Why did it make such a card that is like <laughs> when you go to up to three, you still it's still keep in turn. Like it's just the most no, craziest thing I've ever I seen. I think that was fine until they gave it alliance. Yeah, I uh, because I was like, cool, was, I mean it's okay. The like, lines, cool. yeah, lines is what makes it crazy. Your turn doesn't too. start till you're at three, but that's okay. Like, it just it's lets the, you extend your plays a little bit more. Popping and restanding is that the, is the dirty. Worst. <laughs> yeah. That's like, wow, dude. Not only are you putting out four or five bodies, you're swinging and popping bodies and then restanding. Everything to do about more. that card is like, dumb. That's so yeah. insane, dude. Like, I'm gonna play right, out right, four bodies on my turn. Yeah, it don't makes start no sense. your turn at three or more memory, and I have alliance, and I'm gonna unsuspend twice. All right, here, here, here's here's a here's one right there off the road because I know a lot of people had talk, talked about it. the Ukos and Numamon. Yes, how do you feel uh, about I Numamon? Would, I would definitely so the the ramping Uko. I would definitely would like to see to go to one. He's way too. Okay. Good. There's so much value in him. Like there is. He he like he turns like even decks that are like two like t two to a one point five to almost t one. Like Delphi, like the most recent that there was a right. Delphi that topped. And he ran four Ukos, and that made that deck significantly faster and much more efficient. And the deck is just strong in general, but adding the Ukos on there is incredible. Because adding that extra draw power and gaining memory in this game, especially mm -hmm. now, is so, like, it, you, you don't need to gain a whole lot of memory. Gaining memory, like, even just one, can literally change the whole game. I don't know how For many sure. times I have lost where I've been like, I just need, I just needed one more memory. Or I've swung into security and they stole a memory from me and it cost me the game because I was planning to like Evo over this or do this and whatever. It's, it's, uh, I don't know how many times that's so infuriating. But yeah, like stuff like that, it's just, I think just a too broken. What about the BT17 Uko or 16? Uh, you could, uh, I like, I think searchers, I think searchers are, because, let me see. I know he he's searches. like a reveal top three, take any color Digimon or Tamer, and then also return hatch. the rest to the bottom, and then you may hatch. I think, I think, yeah, he'd have to go to one too, man, because the hatching is what makes it like far, like so much better, dude. It's so, yeah. so good. It's nice. It's like, cool. I just brought this out. I'm going to build up another stack. Yeah, and then a if you leave this Ukumon on the field, the next time I raise, I'm going to do it. Again, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's so dumb. It's so like dumb. it works, but it's so dumb. It's like the start of main phase rookies. Like Patamon. It's like if you leave this Patamon on the field, crazy. I'm gonna turn into an Anjemon. Oh, if yeah. I turn yellow? into an Anjemon, oh, God, yellow, then... <laughs> emissary, hey, emissary. I can see that being a card to get hit to one. BT, what is it? BT 14. 14? Yeah, that fucker's got to go to one, two. <laughs> that guy's, he's so cracked. Yeah, Padamon is. Like, he literally carried a whole vac. Like, he literally carried a whole deck in, like, Japanese meta. Like, it's, oh, it's yeah. Nuts. Still is. <laughs> they said Magna X with Vmons? No, no, no. How about Magna X and Rapid X with Padamons? <laughs> Rapid Mon. <laughs> I wouldn't mind hitting Rapidmon to one. He's amazing. I love Rapidmon too. He's like one of my favorite. Which Rapidmon? Wait, which Rapid Rapid? Rapids? The BT, PTA one. I think. BTA? Oh, BTA. Yeah, he's nuts. He's so good. He's so and good. I feel like in yellow decks, it's a lot better because you get, you like, yellow decks are a lot more predicated on their teamers than yeah. like 
actual yeah. green That's what makes it text. so <laughs> devastating, dude. And then yeah. tapping everything, like, come on, bro. Neg yeah. five. Oh my, I hate you, dude. I, I can't, yeah. I can't stand it. That's why I'm really hoping. My hope for Digimon in the future is that they cap life. I want them to cap life to where you can't go past eight. I think that would change up a lot of like yellows or like any type of like yellow control, yellow hybrid, all of that. I, th- I think it, I think it, you yeah. now need to strategize because like these players are just literally doing like they're progressing the, the turn by just recovering and they're doing it almost so free. And now that yellows efficiently grabs from the security and then benefiting from barrier or trashing or any type of card being removed from trash, it's just way too good. And I think they need, need to make it so the player needs to strategize more on when to gain life. Because after eight, if you do something else, that recovery is just going to fizzle. It doesn't mean anything. So that's just my opinion. That's what I yeah, I can see an argument for that. I know uh, many people who listen to this podcast do not want Jet Sophie to come back because of her unrestricted recovery. She's crap, bro. And I she mean, I crap, know it. I used bro. to I used to be at like ten security back yeah. in my yellow no, hybrid that's, days. That's insane, bro. That's so <laughs> insane. Like, you know, and I, I remember I remember grinding. I, I played yellow hybrid for a brief time, and I remember playing. It was a mirror match, and at one point, oh me gosh, and this not guy, the mirror. Yeah, me and this guy were at like eight or nine security. And I grind it. The only thing that carried me was the TK Kari card. That yeah. I had those out. But versus, ah, yeah. um, and that extra memory, I was able to make far more aggressive moves. And just getting that extra two was nuts. And I remember just sitting. It was like one. Yeah, it was. We literally played out an entire 45 minute round in one game. That's all we did. And yeah, I won. <laughs> just I won for each other. <laughs> yeah, I won because I beat him in one game, and we were we were going into time, and I was like, "This is insufferable." <laughs> it's not even like we're both playing slow. The decks are just right. Uh, like this is not fun. So I, I that's how I felt playing against deck. Vaccine on fucking Saturday. I was like. I'm recovering. I'm not even a recovering deck, but somehow I'm fucking recovering. But you're recovering, and this game is just going on forever. Or yeah. no, or was that ruin mode? That might have been ruin mode control. Ruin mode. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> yeah, ruin mode. Yeah, the a ruin mode control. Your, your dude, game two was like that. Yeah, your They're game two so was grindy. Two, it's crazy. These level sevens are nuts now. It's just, it's like once you have it out, there's like nothing your opponent can do. Yeah, Ruin Mode is like, well, if you can't delete. It's me. a game changer. <laughs> yeah, no, oh, next five. No oh, I delete next five. For you. It's like, come on, bro. And then these starter decks that are coming out, these brand new ones, the Vortex, the. Yeah, you know, the yeah. Vortex that, is oh so God. insane. Rookies, of a keyword. rookies that just tap any Digimon, like conditionless, just the on play, just tap the Digimon. Palmon X. So yep. dumb. Like, what is it? I think the. I think one of the uh, yeah. um, Kiwi Mon. Mons does Kiwi that. Mon. Oh, Kiwi, Kiwi Mons. Mon. On, on play, on deletion, suspend one of your opponent's Digimon. What? What? That's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's a rookie. Uh, or not even a rookie. It's a level four. Like, it's, it's a cheap cost off. champion. Yeah. It's a three cost. Like, fuck off, dude. That's so and then dumb. And then I'll just then uh, Fluffy Mon. Hard oh play this my grand God. Gale. Fluffy Mon, have you seen that card? Fluffy is good. Oh, that's the that's that is, the, right? that's the Digitama, yeah. yeah. When attacking once per turn, you may suspend one of your uh one other Digimon with as much DP or as less as this Digimon. That's yeah, that insane. card is insane. Insane, dude. Like like that green needed nuts. that. Cool. <laughs> like green needed that. Totally. You know, green hey, was yo, starving. Tyrant. Tyrant commentary one. <laughs> yeah, oh my god, Tyrant. He's really gonna look- be a tyrant. I'm not looking forward to him, but next set I'm just gonna be I'm gonna play my armor. I'm gonna play my armor. <laughs> Rapid. I, I can't well, I'm just gonna armor up. I'm gonna be like, you, right. you can't touch me. Not you can't that. do anything. Or I'll just play red hybrid. I don't know. <laughs> but I agree with you. So, I definitely think the game has gotten to a point where it's like, <laughs> I'm okay with this. <laughs> yeah, it's like, dude, that's broken. Why are you okay? It's insane. It's just getting. We're just. I don't even know what to call it. There's a word for it. I'm probably going to remember it once I'm done with this. I know what you're talking but about. But we can't go backwards though, either. right? Like, yeah. it's not like we can just like, all right, can hit stuff. Regressive. No, it's, it's, the thing is, is I think if let's just say we were able to sit down with Bandai at a table and be like, hey, you guys have 30 cards that all need to be hit to one. And then there'd be like, I'll be like, and the game will become balanced. They would see it as like, 
oh, but we're going to make a lot of people angry. Like, yeah, but the game is better. Like, it's like it, it's hard to to sit down and, and explain it. To, to these people and you just it's unfortunate but it won't happen but some I'm people hoping. would say we need rotation i i actually hate rotation i'm I, since i since i come from Yu-Gi-Oh, i kind of and this is maybe like not a very good excuse i like the idea of when a new set drops and all of a sudden a card from set one and two is now because yeah. crazy because yeah. realistically like what cards are we playing from set one and two in Digimon right now? Meg Gra- Digimon? Gravity Crush. Gravity, Gravity Crush, yeah. No, like set, like... What, uh, Ties? What car- uh, yeah, who's, playing, red. who's playing Ty, hey. dude? <laughs> no, it's so Graymon. Graymon P- played? No, play it? it's TK. It's, no, they play All the right. black tie. Uh, you don't yes, play the, TK. TK. TK, you can play Mimi and Gravity Crush. Wowzers. Three cards out of a, a hundred card set, like... I, I, it's it's hey, one of those on C's use. Sure. Oh, I guess I guess the Millic loop. The Jack Millic Raid loop was in BT three, yeah. the right? Ever present purple queen. No, I'm talking about right now, 2024, 415. Like no one's using like these cards unless it's like Millith. Like I think that's called Millith. Yeah, the Millith loop. Yeah, Millith. Yeah, the deck. Yeah, the one, the deck out deck. I can't remember. They use Creepy yeah, yeah. on and other stuff. My boy uh, Ying was using it recently. Um, but yeah, like it's just. I, I like that. I like that. It's like it, it revives something out of a set. And I it's agree. like, oh, dude, that's so cool. Now this card's relevant again, and it does, and it's not a feels bad because like it, I, I like that idea. And then on top of that, like I guess for people that like sell cards, you know, these cards go up in value, so it's nice yes. too. I think that's another healthy thing that I, I enjoy about having cards come be revived out of older sets. I think rotation is so silly. I think we're not Magic. We're not Pokemon. Just. Just leave it alone, man. Nope. I agree. I mean, there's so many good old arts. Like, forget about, like, just, oh, cool, this card is usable. It's like, bro, some of these arts, they're so beautiful, and they will never see the time of day in their current meta. And then mm. all of a sudden, some card comes out. It's like, oh, my goodness, I get to use this art again. I love this art. Yes. Yep. Like, haven't had much of that happen. There's definitely been a couple situations here. And, and then there. even with set rotation, how far back do we go? Do we cut off mm-hmm. so basically everything from BT8 back? Do we just cut off half the sets? Are we doing like, do we go eight sets and then kill the rest? Do we go, yeah, you mean like it's just weird. So set and then 24. Where are the reprints? Yeah. Like, and it's because like, some decks aren't functional without all older cards like yep. Graymon decks, for example. And red hybrid, like that deck can't. Red like hybrid, yeah. That card's got set, set four, <laughs> All like, of the hybrid decks coming up. It's literally like has old cards and it. it has to have it, otherwise you can't use it. So. That's just me. I guess I guess it kind of hurts my argument just a little bit on ban. I just think there just needs to be a mass ban on, multiple, on so many different things. But that's just me. And I'm, I'm mean and harsh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we all got our opinions. We all love this card game. That's like the biggest thing. Like, there's such a deep love for not only Digimon, but the Digimon card game. And I only hope that Bandai would one day listen to Digipod, the digital <laughs> podcast, and realize that hey, there's a uh, there's 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 opinions that some of our community I'll has that maybe scolded. we should listen. If I go on too many podcasts, I'll get scolded, man. I'm gonna yell that. I'll get a DM some of these days, and be like, "Hey, <laughs> I heard what you said." <laughs> no, I try to be careful what I say. I mean, I I I I, I respect everyone's opinion in terms of like like the honest critiques, but there are some things that I think Bandai chooses to do that's unfortunately hurtful to the games. Yes, but, for sure. And there's not much I can do. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, I'm just a, I feel like I'm just a schmuck, man. I mean, who am I? Like, uh, well, you know, just, yeah. just the head judge of one of the largest, you know, <laughs> teams one of in the North America. <laughs> PPGs are all right. They're okay. Yeah, 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 <laughs> Speaking of, I gotta go to Kiss Me at the end of the week. I gotta Kiss Me Florida, and then I gotta go to Las Vegas after that. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm moving everywhere. Cool. Man. Some fun stuff. Yeah, it's cool. The the story is real, and it's just uh, a note for you guys. If you uh, you like something, if you love something, let's fucking do it. Yeah, really. <laughs> like really, just get out there and honestly, if if it's it's now turned into like no longer a hobby for me, it's it's a business now, and I I literally make my living out of it. And yeah, that's so I get nice. to see. I literally get to see the country. I travel around. I'm so humbled by like being able to travel around the country, 
with a game and that I love and I'm going to see people every day. And it like, also it's helped me be much more social. Cause I was like, I didn't want to hang out with nobody. I was you a were little, a Yu-Gi-Oh player. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't say that. Cause I, was just, <laughs> like, <laughs> I just didn't, I, I, I was, it's amazing where, where I've, where I've come from to now, to, to how I am now. It's, it's amazing. I, I'm, I'm very, very humbled by what I've, the opportunities that have been given to me. I like it a yeah. lot. It is nice. It is very nice. Um, you're an inspiration to all. Definitely an inspiration to myself. <laughs> you know, I just want to take the time to say that. I appreciate what you do for the community. All of the judges. I don't think judges get enough appreciation for the oh, shit that really they do. Don't. No, for no, the they don't. shit that they got to no. put up with. Yeah, dude. Especially it's, where it's some of these players. It's tough, man. It's tough. Like, what do you mean I've, I can't <laughs> use my my thing in raising effect? Well, it's because it's, it's in the You know, the area. worst. I'd have to say the worst. <laughs> what's the worst? All right, real quick. What's the worst, like, judging call you've gotten? That, like, it's, consistently, I've had too like, many. I've okay. had too many. But I can tell you the worst type of calls that you get as a judge that's it's my. That's what I meant. When, yeah. So when you show up to a table and <laughs> and the two players are bickering, and it becomes and it's a he said she said situation right. because nobody else was there other than the two players and you weren't there. So you need to now make a decision based on who seems like they're most at fault. And in those situations, it seems like you're just. <laughs> putting favoritism because yeah. I don't know how many I've gone to a call and people were like he did this and uh, then he did this but he didn't do that so I didn't do this or this happened what what happens and it's like okay well now I kind of like unfortunately I have to like leave the game state where it's at or I may have to be like hey look like you currently are most at fault because of this or Hey, you didn't do this. Here's a warning, and then you move on. Because some stuff you can't. You know I mean, you can't make it perfect. You can't yeah. recover everything. So unfortunately, I, I'm gonna have to like, all right, look, I'll give you a caution, give you a warning, and that's how it is. But yeah, it's it's the situations where you weren't there, and the players are now in a situation of he said, she said. So it comes down to like what seems like you're giving partiality towards one player, and then unfortunately, that may cause that person to lose now. Yes. And there's not much you can do, and it, it sucks. And there's and, and that's just, there's a lot of morality that goes into 100%. it, and it's really tough having to make those decisions yep. in a position of power. Essentially, is what it is. And some players don't see it that way. They're like, yeah, it's, he it's, was on a power trip, and oh. I want to appeal. <laughs> well, he's the head judge. You, you kind of can't appeal the head judge. <laughs> no, that's have you ever I, had somebody try to appeal you? Uh, there was a guy he. He he said he wanted to talk to the TO, and I said I was like that's not I was like that's not how the chain of command works. I was like I was like this is I was like this is final. I was like there's not much else I can do. I'm very sorry. Um, you guys can continue playing, or you can. Uh, I think the guy wanted to forfeit. He was like I, I'm just. I, he's like or you can. I was like you can forfeit, and then you can go and input your score. I was like whichever you choose, and he ended up just forfeiting. And then he went and go talk to the TO, and the guy was just like. The t- uh, George was ended up just being like, "Hey, man, whatever he said, dude. <laughs> like, that's how it. Could, like, what do you want me to do, bro? Like, that's. Right, I right. think. I think these players just get so worked up in these situations. It's it's kind of unnecessary sometimes. It's it sucks, but I understand the competitive spirit. But then it just it's like, how far do you bring it, man? How far do you go? Because it's just at some point, it just seems like you're whining. But, yeah, for sure. Makes sense. All right, we're going to let you get on out of here. I know it's about time for yep. you to go. All right. Kicking me so, off already? Okay. I mean, if you want to stay, you know, you're more than yeah. welcome. So. <laughs> I'll stick around. I don't mind. All know. right. Well, um, damn. I'm actually enjoying myself, so. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually enjoying <laughs> myself. Well, all right. Oh, so man. normally we talk about locals. Okay. It's like the first thing we talk about when we get in the pod. So. First question is, have you went to a locals recently? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I run a locals for okay. like a, as like a little side gig. Okay. So how was your locals? Uh, it's great. Um, get about 15, 20 players usually. Um, I played Red Hybrid and <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I, I usually try to let some people win. I try to like 
I'll just give oh, them. Oh, that's nice of you. Especially, especially if I see them, if they get discouraged, I'll usually let them win. But overall, like my locals is pretty good. Sometimes I'll go in there and slap them around, and then I'll just win, and then that's it, or I'll get top or whatever. Because we do like a top four payout, mm-hmm. yeah, for store credit. So yeah, but yeah, that's that's about it. We get a pretty good diversity too in terms of like decks. Well, we don't really have a lot of meta slaves either, so that's the best part about it. We'll get like a lot of. A lot of rogue decks, especially this La- one player. Oh my jank. god! There's one player at my locals, and sh- quick shout out to him because he listens to this podcast. He hey. always <laughs> runs these rogue decks, and it's so infuriating, and I hate them because <laughs> you never know what to expect, <laughs> right? Like, yeah. Shout out to my boy Gordo, man. I, I look forward. To, I, I look every time. He's he's. It's crazy. He's such an amazing player. Very good player. If he only played meta <laughs> he would do way better but he refuses so he plays these horrible decks that i cannot stand sounds like oh, a friend that no. we know sounds like a we fellow a fellow member of podcast yeah but he's, he's bad though that's different <laughs> he's bad <laughs> oh my god <laughs> damn dude oh my god oh man I love Mike. Uh, <laughs> uh, hey, so hey, I'm gonna I, make I, Mike I, listen hey, I to play this rogue part decks of all the time, So that's not I, I, that's not something you know. I play rogue decks all the time. It's fun um, because it's like different. They, a lot sometimes they have like cool like different like things about them that like just randomly works. Don't for make those them see so busted. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I, I like Tyrannomon Cope. Once in a while, I like to play against those decks that like make you think or think outside of the box or do something you weren't expecting because they did something you weren't expecting. And it's like, all right, I have to like for sure around because like I feel like when you sit down in a tournament, you're like, all right, I'm, I'm more than likely going to see this, this and this. And then all of a sudden they get some kind of weird black security control slash Bob Uman like that's I don't know, like. I'm telling you, that, that's a real thing. My buddy Gordo, he literally he makes that stuff. It's so annoying. Uh, are we talking about like the old school by Human that like was a, like a five cost Evo that <laughs> trashed security? No, not the uh, not the Ace one. The most yeah, the uh, old school one. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, the old man. one. Yeah, 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 that one. The one that trashes that trashes security, right? Yeah, yeah for every security. two Digimon Sus- suspended or unsuspended, unsuspended. Yeah. trash security. Unsuspended, yeah. yeah. Oh, I hate that shit, dude. <laughs> Damn, that it's card. like cool. I wasn't <laughs> expecting this. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> but um, but uh, how, how's y'all's look? Was y'all to get a pretty good turn oh, y'all's? No, not this one. Really? Uh, it was like four well, people. Uh, Barton mm. didn't show up because he doesn't like showing up sometimes. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. He he had his uh OT Cup run right. That was the OT Cup Saturday. Oh, okay, Correct. so he our locals on Sunday. So not many people showed up. It was only four of us. So we had like a two round tournament just. For the chits and giggles, basically, uh, I played Omnizoo, uh, Dark Masters Omnizoo, and took it, took the speed Gammon. Yeah, Gammon. Uh, Gammon. Anyways, um, <laughs> I won that one two one. <laughs> he, I don't want to even go into it because of the person. <laughs> but anyways, um, and then round two, I played against Gino. He was playing um, yellow vaccine, but it was like rapid yellow vaccine. Uh, yeah. Armor vaccine. Say it right. Armor vaccine. It wasn't like fully because he was running Mitamamon as well and Gato. It's, eh, it's still armor. Kind of. I guess you won't call it that. Sure. And that was uh, 2 0. Hey, speaking of words, Apocalypse won me a uh, game one <laughs> in that deck. Um, I hate that card, man. I love that card. And then game I, oh. two, it was what won me that one? Um, oh, I, I mega gargled him. That's what it was. Ace, mega gargle. And then just, you know, <laughs> swung over his stuff and got rid of it. And Mercy Mode is quite a good card. Oh, Combo yeah. with uh, Zort to Fee, you just kill the TKs, go to Mercy Mode, go into like Alter B and like <laughs> kill uh, all three sources. Yeah, 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 it was a fun time. It's fun. Um, yeah, but again, again, it was something small. It wasn't anything like crazy. Hopefully next week, because it sounds like a lot of other people like Varney and the rest of our group is going to be there. So hopefully next week will be a better turnout for us. You guys are in PA, you said? Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, I live like 45 minutes from the shop, Oof. so 
every Sunday is a decision whether or not I feel like spending two hours in the car round trip. No, I feel you, man. That's not right. easy. There's a, there was one locals when back in the uh, dark ages when it was hard to get Digimon product. <laughs> oh, I remember those days. <laughs> Where boxes were uh, 200, almost 180 a piece. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Wait, there was a locals I used to drive to. It was like 45 minutes away. I was so sweaty. I went up there, just beat them all. And then I drove home and I'm like, I'm never coming back here, dude. Like, this is so <laughs> far. Like, it's the worst. <laughs> Quick side question before we go on our, like, usual stuff. Do you, like, get a chance to play in big tournaments or not really? Because you have to head judge everything. Um, so, I, I, for a while, I wasn't really allowed to do PPG oh, events. Okay. Oh, P- um, only PPGs? Yeah, no, I wasn't allowed to do any PPG events. So, because it would just kind of, honestly, it would look weird. Right, right. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? Like, you're like, what the hell? That guy's like the TO. Why is he? Why is he a top? Like, what the fuck? Yeah. Um, so, I I haven't really taken the time. I definitely have had moments where I've been able to probably sign up, but then something in life comes up, and I'll end up getting busy, and I'm unable to do it. Uh, there is an Ultimate Cup I actually just signed up for. Um, I didn't really want to tell anybody because I kind of just wanted to stay under the radar and be avoid um, anybody knowing. <laughs> Don't <laughs> worry, no one, no one listens to this podcast at all. No, no, Absolutely no nobody I, at all. I, it's in May. I signed up for it, and um, I'm so hoping if you to guys play see that. a guy named Nightmare, <laughs> he's, it's just it's just your average running the middle locals guy. You know, just take yeah, it easy yeah. on him. He's yeah, new yeah, to the yeah. game. He'll probably smoke me. But uh, <laughs> the last competitive event I, I played in was. Back in BT, was it BT? Man, oh man, it's been forever. You sound uh, like from the BT, time that you're no, no, about BT, it. No, no, BT. It was BT eight. I was like the last one. Oh, I, sh- I, 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 was I, last I, time, yeah. yeah, I got a. Uh, I had I had gotten, I think twenty eighth. I think it was um, just a two fifty six. That was like the last event I had. Um, that I was like relatively decent top. Um, and then the ones before that were all like BT6, blue hybrid, yellow hybrid, meta. And then I did top with uh, Lord Nightmon back in the real dark ages when <laughs> Lord Nightmon was everywhere. Promo Pulse Mons for 30 oh bucks. My God. Yeah. What a time to be alive. I just, I, quick uh, quick t- topic digression. I remember being on call with Bandai and they were like, hey, we're going to do an event. Core TCG, Core TCG is going to host it. And I don't know if you guys remember this, but they did like a Pulsemon per win event. So you would go against somebody on their own software and you would yes. webcam duel and every oh, win yes. that you yeah, did, yeah. you got a Pulsemon. Oh yes. my God. I was like, oh, I want to play in this event so bad. And that's when they were going for like 30, almost 30 a piece. Yeah. And then what this the event. What even happened to that sim? Oh, good. oh, oh no. Yeah. It wasn't really wow. the same. It, was it just, wasn't a it sim, was like right? a, It was like um, weird it was just, webcam connecting yeah, software. That was interesting. Yeah. I kind of liked the it though metaverse because metaverse lobby. Yeah, that was that was interesting. But um, yeah, that I don't was, know uh, if I ever got my pulse ones. I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> there was a period of time. I think there was uh, some. I think Core TCG didn't, didn't get too many. I think they like ended up having to ship out a bunch. But yeah, I think Bandai. Uh, because people were like screaming for pulse mods. They were like, we don't have any more. Yeah, we don't yeah. have any. Like, we're not getting any. Please, please, please print more pulse mods. And they were like, all right. <laughs> Fuck it. Come try our shitty software. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It wasn't that bad. Idea was a, the, the connection. Idea it was, was connection. Good. It was just the, the connection. That was the connection like, was horrible. Yeah, yeah, that was terrible about it. Because, like, you could design your like avatar, you could move around. It was kind of cute, but like, uh, I, I just, that main thing was the connection. Because there was definitely times where I tried to, like, play against uh because they had a they had a judge test a uh, little server so the judges would go in there and play and uh i went in there a few times and i don't know how many times i disconnected from some of my <laughs> games and i was so infuriated because uh, i think jessmon at the time was when yeah jessmon was crazy at that time so yeah that was that was forever ago what man. a time to be alive yeah man for sure but, um yeah that's long story short uh, I, I don't. I don't get a whole lot of time to do it. I wish I honestly could, because I wouldn't mind playing more. But work calls, life calls. Yeah, for sure. Do you guys usually sign up? Sign up for them? Or? Uh, we try to as much as possible. 
I, I signed up for a certain in person that somebody else did not. So now. I and you didn't like, sign up for the one I went to for the in person too. That's a fucking lie. You know it. I tried registered for it. Bro. It was 12.07 and the bitch sold out. Are you guys talking about I North Carolina? I was in the middle of a tournament. Yeah, yeah North and Carolina. Talking about, Are you guys uh, going to that? Chicago one. I would have uh, been going to it if I was able to get a ticket. Oh, man. Oof. And yeah, then, the, my plan is to actually go judge at the Peoria event, so I'm excited. Well, then I'll see you there, because I yeah. registered for that oh, one, sweet, and I got sweet. in. So. Yeah, that's the plan. I, I talked to my buddy, Eric, uh, American Bash. I'm sure you guys have seen yes. him. He, he, I told him I really wanted to show up, because that's Top Cut's first in-person Digimon. That, oh, really? Yeah, nice. that's their, yeah, that's their nice. first in-person Digimon, which I was very excited that they got um, this year. It was about time, because they've been screaming do, for it forever. I was going to say, do Teos get to choose... It when and if they want to do IRLs, it's a little different. Every TO is basically allocated a certain amount of uh, events a year, mm -hmm. and it's uh, you get an even amount of online and an even amount of in person. Um, so it's it's much differently now. I believe I can't remember. I believe it's two in person events, and they have to have. No, I think it's three, two or two or three uh, in-person events, and you have to have all the games within that. So you got to have DBS Masters, Fusion World, Digimon, One Piece, BSS. Even though, even though who's really going to show up to that? I, sometimes <laughs> BSS? I hate that. What's that? Like? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> but um, yeah, you you that's that's pretty much the inside uh, information for that. But that's about it. Um. Online, I feel like sometimes it feels like more. Some tos get more than the others, but I haven't really kept track. But that's that's what I've from what I've seen of how it, it how because play TCG. I don't know if you guys know, but play TCG is the ones that run. They are the lead tos for Bandai yes. at the moment. Yeah, well, of course they're the they, you know premier battle spirits. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm not trying to shit on them or anything. I'm just no, I'm just saying it for what it is. But uh, yeah, they they basically organize for Bandai how TOs are allocated X amount of events, X amount of online mm -hmm. events, and this and that. So that's pretty much it. I wish there was more. I wish it just. I, I kind of wish TOs just had free range to do whatever they want. I'm like, hey, we're gonna I, get, I like, would think the same. Like, it would make sense. Just kind of, you know, don't fuck us over as Bandai. You know, just make sure you bring us money, and then <laughs> mm -hmm. right. Was there free range of like back in the day when like was it two years ago now when they were doing them in the cons? Was that like yeah. a, a reason oh, for that? That was George or, was the only one doing it, man. He was uh I'll give him credit. Oh, that, that was, was all one, PBG. Yeah, he, he went to like almost every con. This that's, that's yeah. one thing I'll give credit to PBGs. They they he'll travel. George moves around a lot. He oh likes, yeah, for sure. He likes going to cons because one, piggybacking off cons is usually cheaper. And on my of opinion, in my opinion, I find it better to have cons host these events because if the players scrub out, they got something to do, you know? For sure. But the biggest issue was these players were coming to these events and scrubbing out and then getting angry that they scrubbed out because they just paid for a ticket. Yeah. For this, right. whatever, to get in. They didn't necessarily want to like go and experience the con or whatever it may be. They just wanted to come play and win and then leave. But... Unfortunately, yeah, Bandai. It's is a like, shame looking back because yeah. I know originally I was like, "Damn, like I don't really want to buy a ticket to con and then buy a ticket to the game." Yeah, but I was like, "It's fine." And now that we don't have it, it's definitely a wow. Now I'm just like, I "Damn, miss yeah. I kind of missed this." No, <laughs> I, I get. I really do understand why, because like, I mean, in terms of like, you I mean some people just don't got disposable income like that, you know? Yeah. Especially nowadays, it's hard. I get it. And spending like what thirty dollars on entry, and I think. I think the typical it's anywhere from like, like 50 70 to 80 yeah, bucks. it's like 50 to like a hundred dollars sometimes for these cons man so i get it and then traveling too if you're traveling yep, travel likely, that's that's like a whole extra so i understand that was the why big thing with like otakon oh my god yeah because otakon was not a cheap convention yeah, no, it was that's, not. Wasn't, that's one thing i liked i loved i loved going to that convention and just walking past them it was I a really cool it. fucking convention though yeah. that one of the best i'd been to 
It's it's definitely one of the better ones, I would say. I I am not I have never really gone to cons other than when I started working with PPG. Um, but yeah, that's I I loved like skipping the line and being like, yeah, I'm a I'm an I'm a an event coordinator or I'm an event guy and they're like oh okay go ahead and I'm like sweet <laughs> it just felt good skipping the line man yeah those lines like, that line was crazy for that yeah those that. lines are nuts I'm like that's how? like that would be my biggest gripe um, I know yep. there was some con where they were like if you're here just here to like register yep. for the event too like, many games separate line. too many games yeah mm-hmm. George that was too many games yeah he worked that was out good a deal. for that yeah he worked out a deal for it to be on the side which I thought was so cool and I think that should be allowed in Bandai's eyes, but Bandai, I don't know what it is with them and uh, cons lately, but they don't want any events and any of the come in cons. Oh, um, that's uh, trash. Yeah, it's tragic, unfortunately, because I think more cons would be okay with that, like having a space allocated to these yeah, well, card of course, players. Because they're getting money. Potential tickets too, as well. So yeah. Like, all right, not only are you you're not only you're going to have to pay for that space, but these people may or may not want tickets after they're done with this tournament. Yeah. That's just me. Oh, Bandai, my Bandai. So- <laughs> All right. <laughs> I can, I can, I could go on a whole Bandai. That's, that's for like a, about six months from now, we can reevaluate Bandai's <laughs> position in the, the card game world. But there you go. That's six months from now. So my, I did not go to locals, like I said, or Dan said, I should say. I had an Ultimate Cup this weekend, which if you guys were tuned into stream, wink, wink, um, I placed 18th. Let's I go. went 6-2 playing Magnamon Armors. That was a 2 a.m. Oh, shit. I just got an off the wait list decision. Um, I was most definitely not feeling Fenry. Fenry disappointed <laughs> the living fuck out of me. And I was like, I don't want to play anything that requires me to sit here and think about setup. So D police was out of the question. Machine Dramon was out of the question. I was like, what do I want to play? And I was like, well, I'm either going to play Bielsamon so I can just go haha Burr Mill <laughs> or I'm going to play Magnamon Armors because for some reason I really like this dumb deck. So I was like, no, my heart's telling me Magnamon. I'm going to play Magnamon. So I got on digimoncard.dev and I threw together a deck list. And I was like, okay, this looks reasonable. <laughs> I did right. use inspiration. I used the two, um, shout out to, it was Josfer and I can't remember, I think it was Carlos. Two people who had topped uh, two other events this format. I used their list for inspiration. Mm. Um, threw the list together. I submitted the deck list. Woke up the next morning. Went to play. And then, yeah, top 18. Uh, There's a whole video you guys can check out that is going live on YouTube. It should be live by the time you guys are watching this podcast. And the deck profile should be coming out tomorrow by the time you're watching this podcast. If you're listening to it, you're a little bit ahead of the time. I'll definitely check it out. That's a a deck not many people would expect in the tournament. Oh, yeah. Especially his uh, version. (laughs) I wasn't. I. Listen. (laughs) Listen. <laughs> he said 2 a.m., a, bro. I wasn't there was a lot of <laughs> There was a lot of good 2 a.m. decisions in there. Were they good in the grand scheme of things? No. But at 2 a.m., those decisions were gone. Magna my a- Magna Angemon <laughs> shouldn't I have Magna Angemon Ace? That card was goaded at 2 a.m. I was like, no, nobody's going to expect this. Sometimes <laughs> those last-minute decisions are so clutch. So clutch. Yeah, I remember, sure. what is it? Uh, I, I A long time ago, I, I swapped out, like, I think I, and I can't remember. I think I swapped out like a couple cards for like non-meta cards, and I was like, "Oh yeah, this is the best decision." I was so happy I did it. I can't remember it's which deck it was, but I do remember being up very late prepping for more two a.m. deck yeah, building man. decisions. Yep. Yeah, it was quite the uh, quite the time. My round one, I took on fucking Shine Gray Ruin Mode Control. Uh. Which was such an annoying pain in my ass because, good lord, the amount of DP reduction that deck does. That deck is just yeah. retarded. That's Sorry. one thing. Trying That's to get th- that word out of my vocabulary. <laughs> that was dumb. That's one thing that deck is like, it hits, it hits everything. Like, there's no deck that's like, like a, a good matchup against it, in my opinion. Like, Shine. Now, Machine Dramon. I guess, like, yeah. Cool. But you can't like, touch it. It's a <laughs> 
it's it is, then, it is rare to but then you come up against yellow vaccine they're just like oh hey machine jermon <laughs> say yeah, hi yeah, to Andrew Mon. Yeah. <laughs> correct <laughs> oh man what a silver bullet but that was annoying. Luckily, he bricked game one, and I really do say luckily he bricked game one. I won game two game anyways. Game two was a grind fast for him. Was, I, if I had lost game two, I'm not going to lie, I probably would have dropped for the day <laughs> because I was like... He's not I about did, it. <laughs> nah, bro. I was like, <laughs> what? There's no way. I just fucking tied against ruin mode control after we played game two for all of like 40 fucking minutes. Like, yeah. nah. I've done, I'm I did not that going with, through this. I did that with yellow hybrid a few times. I was going against some games and like, I find it when you don't care is when you do well. It's so yes. weird. I remember, I remember yes. like, I, I, I was going against a blue hybrid uh, and I was sitting here, I was like, oh yeah, win or lose, I'm, I'm, I'm done. And I ended up destroying him. And I was like, <laughs> surprised. I was like, wow, this is amazing. I actually like smoked this dude and it, I right. felt good. So I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll, I'll go one more round. Did one more round, <laughs> did well. I did well the next round. I was like, I started getting excited and I was like, all right, okay, okay. I'm X1, I'm X1. And then towards the end, it was someone just came in and mopped me up. I was like, all right, this is stupid. This game's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah. That's literally how I went to Saturday. I was like, I just want to have fun. I was like, I don't even care to like, f- a first, I hate Red Hybrid. I was like, fuck these cards, <laughs> but play some Digimon. I was like, I can do that. I'm down for this. Yeah, I, I, that's why I wanted to play Magmon. I was like, this looks fun. I could have fun playing this. I don't have fun when I'm playing Fenry. I do not have fun when I'm playing Fenry. Um, and I had fun every round until I got to Yellow Vaccine. Because. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, and that uh, build was different, vaccine, too. Man. That I, build was I, a little I, bit uh, different than your usual Yellow Vaccine. It had like purple Kari's in it, too. Uh, yeah. It was crazy. Yeah, that shit was a pain in the ass because I was like, I can't do anything. Like, that I knew the moment like it was yellow vaccine. I was like, this is going to be a yellow vaccine build that's running eight fucking aces. <laughs> like Lance was like, you know, Lance, Nate, uh, Lance yeah, was like, yeah. yo, oh my God. he telegraphed the ace. I was like, motherfucker, they run eight. They always <laughs> got it. <laughs> As there's nothing you can do. They always got it. <laughs> They're always telegraphing. Oh, it's always sitting there. I, fucking uh, eight aces. <laughs> Speaking of Lance, he was, uh, man, I thought he was got. I hope he listens to this. I thought he was a big jerk first time I ever met that guy. Man. I thought he was a big jerk. The first time, first time I ever met him, man, sheesh. He was, I, uh, I had approached the table and I asked him, I was like, hey, man, your, your deck box is unfortunately not very family friendly. I was like, it has just naked women on it. Did Sounds he have that right. fucking senpai yeah, deck box? it was that real Sounds bad one. Right. And yeah. I told him, I was like, hey, yeah. man, you can't have yeah. this in the back. He's like, what do you mean? I was like, it's like, this isn't family friendly. He's like, how's it not family friendly? I was like, Look you at have it. half naked women on your deck box. I was like, uh, I was like, you, I was like, you mean to tell me you're okay with a six year old seeing that? He's like, yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? That, sounds like, that sounds like a Lance answer. <laughs> and, and he goes, and he goes, show me in the TRM. He said, show me in the TRM. I was like, oh, okay. Shit. And I, I walked away and I, I, he, it, he put the deck box away, but he wanted, he was like, I want to see the TRM. And that's where I kind of <laughs> like, I like him because he's combative, but like in a, in a good way. Oh my God. He'll, he, 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 there's definitely, it, it's pretty funny. Like I know me and Eric have definitely uh, American Bash. We've talked a few times about Lance and his, his uh, not attitude, but like just his nature. Sometimes. It's his demeanor, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But that's I how love he rocks. Lance, though. I, every time I see him at an event, I give him a big hug. I'm like, dude, it's, it's always great to see him. But yeah, that was the first time I met him. Yeah, the first time I, le- I met this motherfucker, I had a triple sleeved deck because I oh, had. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, of course. Had, of course. Um, he called that shit out quick. I know he did. Instantly. I, had a, <laughs> I think I had perfect fit inners with trash outer sleeves. We're not trash, but like I wanted them oversleeved, mm-hmm. and then I had oversleeves, and he yeah, was shuffling. He's uh, like, "This was uh, <laughs> that was, <laughs> this was no, this, too many this games. Was the Philly, the too many games. Yes, yeah. too the many 3v3 games. Yeah. on uh, Friday. <laughs> yep. I'm. This is Lance. 
man, this was kind of big. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's triple C. This was my first competitive TCG event, okay? Because uh, Digimon <laughs> is my first competitive card game that like I played You're like so at funny. this level. So I was like, yeah, it's triple C. <laughs> He's like, I don't think this is legal. I was like, I can pull it out of the oversleeves if you want. He was like, yeah, you do that. I don't want to have to like, you know, call a judge over anything. I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. He, Me, five I, I minutes before say, the fucking shit if starts. He's listen, <laughs> if he ends up listening to this, he is definitely danced on the fence sometime on that line of sharking and and uh, just. But but he but I do like that he calls mm. he he holds players accountable. That's one thing I like because there yeah, are he does. and I, I I I respect it because I know in his mind he's he doesn't want them like he doesn't want someone to like try to cheat him or or do something that they're not supposed to do. So I like that he holds that should have been called out from yeah, the start. Exactly, exactly. So that's why. Oh, I, I this said, motherfucker was triple Steven. That's where he hid that fucking hammer spark. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Something like that. Yo, that he, was so funny. He's oh my god. I remember and he was playing Yellow Hybrid for that event. Was it? Was that? Was that what it was? That was the one, right? D Reaper. Oh no, D Reaper. Oh, D Reaper. That's what it was. Yeah. Oh my god. Because I Cliff, was playing Yellow. Because Cliff was playing. Cliff was playing armor Imperial against me. Oh, good I was Imperial. the one who everybody was looking at during that fucking round one match, and then my <laughs> fucking heart was pumping. I was like, "Can I win this?" I'll this never, motherfucker just dropped Gatekeeper on me. I'll never forget that Otakon. I had to disqualify the the runner up in the finals. Oh against, yeah, um, I forgot the player's name, but uh, he was a runner up. He was playing Alphamon against uh, Luca. Oh and yeah, playing, and I had to DQ the guy because he's triple sleeved. Yep. No, 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 no. He didn't triple sleeve. He double sleeved his alt arts and some. Of oh, his and higher single rarity. sleeve the other ones, right? Yeah, he had. Right. He yeah, had about yeah. six. It was like sixty five percent of his deck, if I remember correctly, the count. He it was about sixty five percent of his deck was was uh, double sleeved. And when I looked at it after breaking because it was it was perfect because you couldn't you didn't notice because it was perfect fits on the cards yeah. and when luca got done shuffling he was like oh i broke a sleeve i was like oh which one and i asked the guy i was like i give a replacement and he said yeah give me a second and i looked at it and i noticed some cards were double sleeved and some weren't and i got up and i called my judge over and i was like here what do you see and he's like oh this is double C, bro. I was like, yeah, he's disqualified. <laughs> They're like, oh. and uh, yeah, that was that was tough. And yeah, that was I felt bad. I felt really bad. But gotta... you, you want to know what else is tough? You you might remember this. This might be how you remember me. Do you remember yep. the guy who lost an Alpha Mon deck? Max Rarity. Oh, Max Rarity yeah, Alpha Mon I remember. Deck. Oh, my God. At Otakon, right? Yep. Yeah. Oh my God! That I remember this dumbass right here. I yep. remember seeing you walking around frantically. I frantically, felt so bad. I man. was fucking livid, bro, I because I don't so even bad. know how I got up without it. I was like on yep. the biggest high too. I was like, wow, I just beat my yep. worst matchup. I was like, I got this today. Yep. And then I fucking left it at the table. And shout out to whoever picked that deck up. I hope that deck did you well, because. That shit was max rarity. Yeah, man. That that was... that's tough. Yeah, I remember. I remember telling my judges, I was like, "Hey, just be on the lookout for X deck box." I was like, "This guy." <laughs> nah, they took guy. that shit. They scooped. <laughs> <laughs> they took that shit. They scooped, bro. <laughs> they were like, "I wouldn't I'm be surprised, out. man. I wouldn't be surprised." It's kind of sad too because that's usually the only stealing cases you see at Bandai events. You don't ever see, oh, someone jacked my binder. That's the one good thing I find at most Bandai. Events that's like someone lost their deck box and unfortunately someone picked it up and kept it so yeah but <clears throat> you know you live and you learn i've never left my deck box at a table after that <laughs> at any yeah. in-person event that is not my own locals yep. or a locals with filled with people that i semi-trust first thing i do is i pack up i'll briefly talk to the person put it in my bag and i, I immediately get up i i can't I have to like I, I get that feeling though because there's definitely been times where I've been so excited after I won something. I'll yeah. Stand up and I'm like, oh shit, I forgot my mat or something. But yep. I 
can't imagine. Alphamon, max, what was it, like a max rarity Alphamon? Or? Yeah, it was fully max rarity. Oh, too. Oh I, was looking, looking max rarity I was looking at that forward time. to that Dude, deck. That was like, what, at the time that deck fucking Very, well, or you can were I think 60 it was like a six yeah it was like the a door room was like 50 yeah. or something like that too. I had, oh, yeah. I had God, pre-release bro. of fucking dexes as well it was oh, it was like man. a five or six hundred dollar deck oh, yeah, that's a, it was a travesty that's a huge fucking field spot. my locals is fucking great they got together and they built me not a max rarity but they built me another alpha mod as much as possible like we did. That's what's up. pieces yeah. so that's one thing it's one thing I like about my locals is I can I can leave my bag yes. open fully out no one's gonna touch it. Yep. Like not a single person. That's that's one thing I like about it. Yep, I agree. And those are the locals that like I like and I trust because they're filled with good people. People that you know, yep. people that you trust. Definitely. Not that I would like hold that against you know like a what five hundred twelve player event that one might have been because that was a lot of players. Yeah. Maybe that yeah, was a big one. But you know, never again. I could say lessons were definitely learned that day. <laughs> yeah, every event has at least one or two like. Lost deck boxes I've seen. It's no tragic. Matter what, no, yeah, no matter what card game, there's at least one or two. Someone, someone will. Uh, it just happens. Lose. It's just so yeah. easy. Yep. It doesn't take any time, man. You leave it. Someone's at the table. They're like, "Hey, whose deck box is this?" People are like, "I don't know." I'm like, okay, yunk. That's it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I guess it's yeah. mine now. <laughs> that's why. That's, but I, I also am like, when I find something, uh, a deck box that's lost, or someone that turns it into me. I and then when someone comes to claim it, I ask them to describe everything in the deck box. Right, makes sense. Oh yeah. my god, I have to do it. It's because I would hate for someone to like. I've I've had a few people who were like, "Oh man, uh, I lost the deck box." I'm like, "Okay, what was the color of the deck box?" And they're like, "Black." I'm like, "Yeah, we don't have that." And they're like, "You sure?" I'm like, "Yeah." And they've come back up, and then they've pointed to the deck box that I had, and they're like, "Oh, that's mine." I'm like, "What's inside?" And I've seen them, they've named a deck that's not even in there. And I'm like, this isn't yours. You're a liar. Oh, <laughs> that's like, terrible. Yeah, oh, that, that is, is terrible. It sucks, man. Like, they, they, just, they just assume that I'm going to give it to them. I'm like, what's inside? And they're like, oh, it's this deck. I'm like, okay, what alt arts do you have? What color sleeves? And they're like, right. Because uh, uh, if you're the player, you would know instantly what yeah, it was. Exactly. Like, why wouldn't you know what's in your deck? But yeah, people. I've only have had that happen once. I'm curious. Well, not curious, but um, I'd like to know what is maybe you. I know I just said like a thousand words. I didn't actually say anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I was trying to phrase the question in my mind. I don't know if you can answer it, so I'll just ask it. What is like Bandai's policy? I'll tell you why it popped into my head. What is Bandai's policy on cheaters? I just thought about um, the most recent um, thing that happened with One Piece. This, uh, so Dan, I'm not sure if you saw it, and obviously our audience probably hasn't heard of it either. Basically, what happened is the in an online event, a player had their hand, and instead of putting their counter down one by one or as a hand on top of the table, they took their whole hand, put it in their trash, picked oh. up their trash, and then said, "Yeah, I have enough counter," and they started counting all the cards in their trash. And Boy, if you weren't paying attention. It's very easy yeah. to not catch as the yeah. opposing player. Yeah. I am personally, I, I say, it, uh, you know, we host events. Uh, we host locals, online locals every Friday. I say if I catch somebody cheating, you're fucking, you're not only disqualified from the tournament, but you're fucking banned from all of our tournaments because I don't deal with that shit. That shit's, yeah. it's dirty, disgusting. Most- it's unsportsmanlike and I'm just not about it. But I'm curious to know like how, obviously, you know, judges, we have a way of handling it professionally and like as a TO. But mm-hmm. how do, like what is Bandai's policies on cheaters it's it's usually it's i mean i i in most cases it's always a ban for a year um mm-hmm. we, we take a report down i submit it like the head judge has to submit the the report i have like my own little form that i submit to bandai and then uh a group usually um the level zeros included will also watch and look and they review any footage pictures and then they conclude whether or not the person's cheated or not Mm -hmm. Um, and then after that depending on the severity of what they do um it's usually a year or more okay that's usually what happens Um, so it's a joint bandai and level zero decision yeah yep okay because like the level zeros are technically uh they're like they're right in the middle they're like bandai and like 
their own their own entity at the same time. Mm -hmm. That's then they they help with um, basically banning. I know Ben, the level zero for One Piece, and then Zach. I know they definitely review uh, multiple uh, things like every every weekend, pretty much when there's an event. <laughs> definitely, yeah. there, there's always something. Um, but yeah, it's it's about a year. Um, if you were to like basically take cards from out of camera view and put it in your hand and be caught doing that that's about a year um wow if yeah if, um if depending on how if you back talk or bad mouth or do get angry or whatever just act on sportsmen while you've been caught cheating that's usually sometimes a permanent ban you don't have Hell it yeah. that's it like you're out yeah. of like, fuck you for catching me cheating like, who are was, you there was what? a guy he dot he tried to dox the the to after he got caught Damn. and yeah he he got doxxed and he completely got removed he's banned forever like in all, cost, all games good which is <laughs> which is good um there's been people who've tried to cheat the judge test and they've been banned from the judge program permanently <laughs> uh, so yeah i mean that's usually i'd say minimum usually a year uh it depends it's very rare when you get like uh, a three month or six month ban, and the only one I can think of is uh, Zenitsu. He uh, was the actually he was sorry to call you out there, bud, but uh, he was actually the first Digimon player to ever get like hit with a ban in the wow. game. Wow! When the game very first came out, nice. He, uh, he got banned for six months or no three months, three months for basically just an unsportsman. He was just he just wouldn't stop yapping man and they the to and head judge are like look if you don't stop you're out of here and he wouldn't stop and they're like all right man <laughs> that's it <laughs> he got, reminds uh, me of wwe where like the ref <laughs> is in the ring he's like you really want to keep this going on get him yeah. out of here <laughs> <laughs> much, but, oh, um, dude. <laughs> there's there's some things also uh it if you it's kind of i it, some people won't care, but it also if you're in the interview process of the cheater and they fess up and they're honest and they're like, "Hey, man, I'm sorry. I, yeah, I was, I was actually trying to cheat. I'm sorry. I'm I, I fucked up. Shouldn't have done it." You know what I mean? If you're mm -hmm. that, actually comes into account. Like we we consider that. Um, I know most cases for me when they say it, I don't care. I'm like, you cheated. You're getting you're getting banned. But that's right. just me. Like you're like I'm with have, you there, bro. They're they're supposed, but regardless of what it is, they're supposed to be immediately disqualified from the, from the event and barred from participation as prizes. So that's just the minimum of what yeah. happens, regardless of what they may do. Uh, unsportsman like conduct is actually probably the biggest one you can get like a half like that's the one I'd say where you'll get a permanent ban pretty quickly. I mean, it makes sense, you yep. know. I'm, realistically, you're not paid enough to deal with this bullshit. So yeah. if you want to keep it going, Chief, Ain't got time, I'm not man. dealing with your bullshit. So yeah. you can just get this, hold this perma ban. <laughs> yep, pretty much, dude. It's it That's sucks, true. but it's it's one of those things that people they really do push it, man. They really will push your buttons. That's the one thing they'll they'll go for anything, any type of reach that they can get. They'll go for it, and then you're like, all right, look, if you don't stop them, um, you're out of here banning you from my event there was, there was a couple of people at nats that i had to had to say that too but i was trying to give them a the benefit of the doubt like hey look just stop stop your yeah stop your crying yeah i heard yeah Lance had his little bit of stories here and there <laughs> <laughs> had to lay it down sometimes then it sucks too and players are just oh it's the worst when they're like calling each other names across the table like, oh dude, really? you guys are acting like serious? kids. You guys are acting like kids now. Like, come We're on, playing stop. a card game, guys. Come yeah, on, like, relax. Stop, dude. Seriously, like, get up. That's oh the way that I look God. at it. I'm like, bro, it's a, it's a card game. We're supposed to be here to enjoy the card game. If you're trying to cheat, like that was malicious AF. It's not even like, like, mm -hmm. yeah, you're you're fucking out of here because you're a fucking scrub. And like, there's <laughs> just like, I'm like, nah, I'm not with that, chief. Like. Cut that shit out. Yep. I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not paid enough to deal with yeah, this, and I'm definitely didn't. I didn't pay money to get into this event to deal with you. Yeah, so. like, why am I arguing with somebody at my hobby? Like for my hobby, dude. Like, no. Exactly, for, bro. Shut up. Like, I, don't, I don't need to hear you. <laughs> 
All right, so we're at about an hour 45 almost, so we're going to call it a day there. Yeah. Don't want this going on too long. So first of all, I want to say, Nathan, thank you for coming on and sharing your experience with us. It was fucking great talking with you and getting to listen to Thanks, you. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. Appreciate I really it. enjoyed myself. I appreciate meeting you guys and, and, and having a talk with you guys. Yeah, for sure. And for our viewers and our listeners, if you enjoyed this interview, please do let us know how you enjoyed it and let us know who else you would like us to get on podcast because we do have a couple more interviews lined up and I now have another person that I want to get on interview, which I'll say it here. I want to get Robo Sushi on. Let's go, my boy Zach. Let's go. So that's the next one I definitely want to get on here. So you guys can look forward to that. But if you guys have made it this far into podcast, we thank you guys for always listening and supporting us. So with that, I say, and that is it for today's episode of Digipod, the digital podcast. So until we talk to you guys the next time, peace out. Catch you on the next one. (laughs) 